Hello everyone, it's Brandon here again for another spiritual practice vlog. Uh, this is number three. Uh, I have switched to practicing Metta as my main practice um, under the advice of uh, Bhikkhu Kandana and uh, I apologize if I might be pronouncing uh, his name slightly incorrectly, but um, I faced a bit of hardship in transitioning from Anapanasati, or mindfulness of the in and out breath or breathing. Um, to metta because um, metta in the way that uh, Bhikkhu Kandana uh, instructs it is a um, uh, a bit of a more advanced technique um, than just uh, maintaining mindfulness on the breath throughout the day and um, it's it's rather difficult to to do this uh, specific meta technique uh, throughout the day for me, at least right now, and I'm not even sure if that's um, what he was suggesting. Um, but I was trying to to stay true to um, his advice. He he said to 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 do only meta for for at least ten days. Uh, and that's what I'm trying to do. Um, today I actually did my first uh, sit, dedicated sit practice to uh, do metta in the way that he instructs. And uh, I actually had rather surprising results. Uh, I was thinking that it was going to be very difficult to uh, get into jhana um, with this technique as I'm still new to it. Uh, and I wouldn't say that all that I did um, get into the first jhana while I was uh, practicing it um, in my first real go at it, but um, I will say that I got a lot closer than I was expecting, um, but uh, closeness to jhana was not really uh, the, the goal with this um, practice anyway for me. It was more to just uh, develop the ability to, to, to do the meditation uh, and really see what the effects of it are. And I will say that I, I do uh, thoroughly believe that this metta technique uh, is um, sort of extra beneficial for developing sila or uh, morality or virtue, uh, if you were to say it in English. Um, so, with the metta technique, the way that it works, just to give you a, a rundown so you know what I'm talking about, um, essentially you, you pick a spiritual friend that you have, someone you're not attracted to, who is alive, who isn't a family member, and maybe a couple other things. Um, if, if you just simply search in YouTube, Bhikkhu Kandana, which is B-H-I-K-K-H-U space C-A-N-D-A, N A, uh, and then Meta, M E T T A, into YouTube. You'll find the video where he instructs how to do Meta in this uh, specific way. But uh, yeah, so you you pick a spiritual friend meeting at least those criteria, and then I believe a couple more that he says in the video that I'm forgetting now. Um, and uh, that's 
part of it. Uh, the first part of when you actually go to do the technique, I mean, you would have already had your spiritual friend uh, that you're going to be using for the technique selected. Uh, and he does recommend that you stick with one spiritual friend uh, as you do the technique, um, unless, uh, I would guess, only if there were was potentially some type of falling out or negative uh, event that occurred with that spiritual friend, maybe then you would choose another uh, in order to not um, bring too much negativity into the meditation, which is ultimately uh, aimed at uh, generating and spreading loving kindness. You don't really want um, too much baggage and negative things to be there. Um, which is one of the reasons why you do not pick family members. Um, because there can be usually quite a bit of negative past there with family members, just for the mere fact that you've known them for a certain period of time. But uh, regardless, so with this meta practice, you will start by going to a rather fond memory in your past, um, one that uh, I would say has uh, some loving qualities to it, uh, a, a, a really positive memory. And you will go to this memory uh, solely for the purpose, really, of generating um, some feelings of meta already and those will typically at least at the beginning for most people be felt around the heart um and that is a good place i find at least for myself so far with the technique um to kind of focus things is around the heart uh, and this uh, from what i remember from his video it it is uh, kind of what he suggests as well. So, with this, you generate those uh, positive sensations um, of a bit of love and um, compassion uh, through that memory and then uh, that's basically what the memory is there for in this practice is just to generate those feelings then uh, you think of your spiritual friend who you've already selected and you think of uh, I think he suggests just one quality you uh, really admire or appreciate about that friend um, I've kind of been using multiple at times multiple qualities I appreciate about this person um, as it, it does seem to be kind of helping the practice at least for me right now and I'm not sure if that is against um, the technique in the way that he teaches it um, it is a question I need to ask him uh, next time I get the chance to speak with him possibly but um, once the once you think of those qualities, um, one way that you can do this uh, is uh, once you've thought of the qualities that you admire of the person, then you can sort of visualize or even not really need to visualize, but sort of feel as if they have been dropped into your heart or um, where those, uh, feelings of, or, or meta-like feelings have already been, uh, generated in you, um, and then it becomes you feeling those feelings and sort of with a recognition of the fact that the, the spiritual friend is there with those feelings and those feelings are radiating to them. Um, and this is a way of, in a sense, sending those, the, the compassion and love and kindness to them. But, 
he says that for him at least and some others it has worked to um, feel as if you're generating it uh, directly to them there in where the sensations are occurring um, it just seems more direct and it does feel more direct to me and it, I think it is a good way of doing things um, and then from there um, and I apologize because I forget um, many of these I do need to rewatch his video or at least the end of it uh, on the meta practice but uh, once you're with the feelings and this is a feeling meditation uh, of the the loving kindness being radiated to your spiritual friend uh, you'll also um, notice hindrances uh, any sort of resistances or tensions that come up, whether they be in your body or thoughts or whatever. Um, and uh, it's important to note, be uh, mindful of uh, this area I've noticed, and I think he does suggest this in the video as well. Um, when hindrances come up, they often create some tension in the forehead and head area that's notable. Um, but uh, as hindrances arise uh, while you are uh, trying to maintain sati or mindfulness on uh, the sensations of metta uh, in the heart or wherever else they occur, um, You'll, you'll be noticing, um, you know, tensions and things arise. And um, Bhikkhu Kandana in the video mentions six R's. And I think, I, I know relax at, and is one of them. So the one thing, in a holistic way, what I've been doing is essentially, uh, as I'm kind of, learning the technique I'm releasing which I think is one of the R's but I'm not 100% on that one but you release and relax these tensions hindrances and um, as you do this uh, once they're released and I think re-smile <laughs> isn't actually smiling is, is part of these um as you do that these six r's that he mentions in the video mainly just releasing or, or sorry mainly relaxing is a way you can kind of think of it holistically you're really you're relaxing the hindrance or the the any type of resistance you feel come up or any types of tension you feel in your body, uh, and then you return to um, the sens sensations of metta as they're occurring. Um, and you might need to use the memory at this point to kind of renew the sensations of the, the, the metta being radiated and you might also need to, um, again, uh, bring up the positive qualities of the spiritual friend. Um, but I find that it, it, it seems as if that sometimes all of that is not necessary and you can go back to the meta sensations if they're strong enough and as long as the recognition is clear that the spiritual friend is there and is the one receiving this. Um, so then, you know, once you relax the hindrance, you return to the the sensations and metta around the heart and uh, resume your attention on that and resume your sati on that. Uh, and uh, essentially what this is going to do do is you're you're going to be bouncing between hindrances and resistances and this the sensations of metta uh, rather quickly at the beginning 
Um, and uh, I found this practice to be actually very um, sort of invigorating in a way. Um, the sensations of metta alone are unlike the breath or many other meditation objects, which do in an authentic way feel to be, although they might be wholesome objects, they do feel to be rather neutral, whereas the sensations of metta as they're going to occur in this type of a practice are going to be rather positive already. Uh, and it does kind of form a meditation experience where um, there's quite a degree of uh, of satisfaction and sukha, um, even though you might not be fully in, you know, jhana, or, or really even quite close at times the positive nature and feel of the metta practice and sensations themselves do seem to generate a a good bit of satisfaction that allows meditation to occur um, with a, a surprising amount of ease for how sophisticated the technique is although in practice it's not that difficult in a sense um compared to many other meditation techniques it can be uh in a way it does have more steps to it there is a bit more to juggle you you could say um but i am rather impressed with my first real go at it and um I'm probably going to be making more vlogs here in the next uh, week or so as uh, I am trying to do an at-home meditation retreat of sorts uh, where I'll be meditating at least four hours a day, hopefully, for each day of the six days that I have off from work in a row. So, um, uh Anyway, I hope that you found this uh, this vlog interesting, and I hope that you uh, give uh, Bhikkhu Kandana's uh, meta technique uh, a shot, because uh, I do think it is a very uh, interesting and useful technique, it seems so far, uh, to explore. Um, and it's quite different from really any other meditations that I've done, any other practices that I've done. And uh, again, as I mentioned in the beginning, um, I do find myself um, uh, a lot stronger in sila when using this as my main technique, as rather than just focusing on the breath or... Uh, as I was doing Fire Casino before, um, which is just candle flame meditation, essentially, is what you could call it, although uh, Casino is, you know, closing your eyes and recreating the image um, and, and being attentive to that. Um, it's different than just meditating on a candle flame. But... Um, I'm finding that uh, a meditation uh, specifically focused around loving kindness uh, is quite good for for also developing sila or virtue or morality. So uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this uh, vlog. And uh, yeah, stay tuned as I will probably be releasing more uh, in the coming days. Thanks for watching.